Hello, hello, my friends. I hope you're doing very well. Today's mini training is going to be on thresholds um, because I've seen a lot of misunderstandings around finding a dog's threshold line and what that actually means. Um, and I think that first, I want to debunk a misconception around it. And secondly, I want to give you some actionable steps that you can take to accurately find your dog's threshold line. Um, so as always, I am shuffling between two cameras. So if you see me jumping up and down, that's what's going on there, but let's get into it. So one of the things I like to start off by saying is that we all know this phrase, finding your dog's threshold, or don't let your dog go over threshold, or we always train sub threshold. We know those phrases, right? And we know that the threshold is the point at which our dog is, is demonstrating a fight, fight or freeze response, right? And our dog at that point is responding to some sort of perceived threat or perceived event. Um, and the body is preparing to overcome and work through this event so that it can stay alive, right? Um, but something that I think we need to clear up is that it's not like there's just one condition it's not like what I, I'm going to use my fancy whiteboard here. Here we go. It's not like we just sort of have a line where it's like, whoop, everything over here is safe for the dog. But once it happens on this side of the line, now the dog is over threshold. It doesn't really, it's not like, a, there's not like a point there's not just one single event that is below threshold over threshold doesn't work that way instead it's a spectrum so i wrote i don't know if you guys can read it but it says cold here and hot here so we want to think about it actually moving on a spectrum right there's like a line and here's instead what i want you guys to think about let's say hypothetically if i can open this up Let's say hypothetically, you decide to, uh, or you're gonna overcome dogs. You know that your dog is reactive to other dogs, okay? Well, the first thing you need to know is what are the different, uh, different actions, during, uh, distance and appearances of that dog? So you want to know what is the dog um, doing? Is it, is the other dog, is the trigger dog walking? Is the trigger dog running? Is the trigger dog also reactive? What is the trigger dog doing? And let's say hypothetically, if the trigger dog is just walking, then you're somewhere on this side, right? But if the trigger dog is reacting back to your dog, then he's a little bit closer to hot, right? So he's coming along this side. Um, you might ask yourself, it, if the dog, if the trigger dog is within 75 feet, then you're super cold. You're not going to get any response from your dog at all. Your dog is not even going to, he's going to look and what look away. So 75 feet is far, far, far below threshold, right? 75, or I'm sorry, 50 feet rather is about right here, right? He's definitely showing more interest. He's definitely more aware of the trigger dog but he's not necessarily as good as he was at 75 feet. Now, maybe you find that at 40 feet, your dog is getting a little bit more overwhelmed, right? He's demonstrating more reactivity. And then maybe by the time you're, the trigger dog is 20 feet away, now he's far, far, far over threshold. So we see the progress, we see the transition, right? That's how you want to think of it, is instead of it just being like one specific line, you want to think about the different conditions that the environment and the situation are posing to your dog, and where on that threshold is he? Is he far, far, far over here where he's really reserved, calm, indifferent, living his best life? Or is he starting to build in a little bit more stress? Is he building an even more stress? Is he building an even more stress all the way up to the point where he is just at a, he can't even hear you. He doesn't even know you're there, right? So now let's take separation anxiety as an example. 
let's say that you do your first separation anxiety goodbye without locking the door. And you notice that your dog is about right here. So without locking the door. Okay, you notice that your dog on the spectrum, he's not completely cold, but he's definitely not far over the threshold. He's like somewhere over here-ish, right? If you lock the door, then he's gonna demonstrate a little bit more stress behavior. So now it's building. If you lock the door and add duration, then you're going to get a lot more stress behavior. So now he's all the way over here. So we wanna be thinking about the different conditions and where on the spectrum does that condition lie? Now, a lot of times we think about finding our dog's threshold as just one single event, right? We just, we just go out and we're gonna find out exactly what our dog will demonstrate at 15 feet away from the trigger, right? And we think of it as just one single event. But in fact, you guys should be doing multiple experiments because you're finding several different threshold lines. It's not just one. You're finding several different things. But here's one other thing that I think a lot of people don't talk about is that when we're finding your dog's thresholds, plural, when we're finding those thresholds, we are finding out what we don't already know. The purpose of finding your dog's thresholds and running those experiments is not to watch your dog go over, you know, start lunging, start barking, start whining, start clawing, start biting, start attacking. The purpose of those experiments is not to see all of that happen <laughs> because we know, okay, we already know that if Fluffy is too close to Aunt Susie, he's gonna bite, right? So actually the purpose is to find out what we don't already know. And this is another important part because I don't think people go out trying to find out what they don't know. They just go out to see, yeah, I, I know already that if my dog is within 50 feet, he's gonna start lunging and barking. Okay, cool. What don't we know about that? What happens at 60 feet? What if, the, if, if, what if he's at 75 feet, uh, but there's a, Tr um, you know, the trigger is, is looking in the opposite direction of him, isn't addressing him at all. What, it, what happens if the trigger is wearing a hat? Does that change the threshold line, right? We need to be ser in search of questions and finding those answers somewhere on that spectrum. So tell me in the comments if this was helpful for you. Uh, hit the like button to let me know as well. And um, I very I want to kind of reframe how we think of the threshold because I, I know that I'm guilty of this as well. I think that we sometimes oversimplify it as just like one specific thing when it's actually a myriad of things that change and evolve depending on a several, several different um, criteria, okay? All right, my friends, have a wonderful week and we'll chat very soon.